The video you're about to watch is questioning whether we live on a boat. If you don't like that, time to move on and leave a daft comment at the bottom. I've got overwhelming evidence that this is nonsense, using physics. Rigid body rotation with transmission. Use the physics of that to work out whether a spinning ball moving through space is at constant velocity, constant speed, and it's not by no means. Enjoy the video. Here on Earth, we can stand on a mountain top and we can't feel movement. In space on the ISS, astronauts can float and not feel any movement because we're told we're moving at a constant speed through space, revolving a thousand mile an hour, traveling through space at 67,000 mile per hour. So we just can't feel anything. Is this true? So we're looking at two constants constant spin of the globe at a thousand mile an hour and the constant speed of 67,000 mile per hour as we move through space around the sun. Constant speed. Now it doesn't matter if we're doing 67,000 mile per hour through space or 500 mile per hour on a jet plane, 80 mile an hour on a motorbike or 30 mile an hour on a train. As long as that speed is constant we won't feel any change. But if that speed changes, I say 10 mile an hour in 10 seconds, we'd notice it. And it doesn't matter what that constant speed is, we'd notice it the same at all constant speeds. Here we have a fairground ride. Now we have a disc that spins at constant speed. And the disc, while spinning, moves on the track. So what we're looking at is the speed along the track. So if you look at the wizard at the centre, what speed he's doing, backwards and forwards, and then you as a passenger, as you spin, what speed are you doing along the direction of the track? As you spin, you're accelerating and decelerating faster and slower along the track. So pick a person and watch them as they move backwards and forwards as they're spinning. Now let's say you pick the man in the red dot. Now he's accelerated from the blue dot position to come level the side of the wizard. So he's going faster than the wizard to catch up with him. So here we have the man in the red dot again. He's moved ahead of the wizard and he's had to decelerate to get to this point at the side of the wizard. Here we have a top view of our ride. The base is revolving. It's not moving side to side. Everybody in the ride is at a constant speed around the circumference of the base. If this changed in a short amount of time by say two miles per hour, people will be jolted from side to side. But this is our first constant. Our second constant, the base is revolving it's just moving along the track. As it moves along the track, everybody is moving at the same speed, at a constant, constant speed. How have this changed? Again, by two mile an hour in a short space of time, people will be jolted forward or backwards. Now let's combine our two constants, revolving at a constant speed and moving along the track at a constant speed. Now you're the dark green spot moving along the track. The only part of the circle moving along the track, moving at a constant speed, is the middle. As you move along, you're accelerating and decelerating along the track. So here the centre of the disc is moving at a constant speed, but you are decelerating to get to the back of the centre. So here again, the centre is moving at constant speed, but you are accelerating to get ahead of the centre. As you're rotating around the circumference, and that centre point is moving in one direction. You're constantly accelerating and decelerating as you rotate in the direction of the pace.
So how do we know what direction the Earth is moving around the Sun? On the lit side of Earth, the Sun's terminator line gives us the direction. Earth is travelling at all times. Now this rocket is an example of what's happening to you, say on the equator or people on the ISS. As we make that journey, supposedly around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. And what speeds increase and decrease along our journey, because we're revolving as we go. Our rocket's off, it's travelling at over 67,000 miles per hour to catch up with Earth. And then it's ordered to stay a set distance from Earth out of the gravitational pull to follow Earth. Now this rocket is doing 67,000 miles per hour. The solid red arrow on the right indicates the speed Earth is travelling around the Sun at 67,000 miles per hour. The blacked out red arrow indicates the speed of the rocket as it tracks the Moon. It's now set at Earth 67,000 miles per hour, rocket speed 67,000 miles per hour. Our rocket will shortly be ordered to track the Moon as it orbits Earth. The Moon travels around the Earth at 2,288 miles per hour. Our meter on the right hand side shows plus and minus 2,288 miles per hour. So this meter is showing the variations of the speed above and below 67,000 miles per hour. Now this rocket is doing 67,000 miles per hour to keep up with Earth. To draft the Moon, it has to accelerate above and beyond that speed. Plus 2,288 miles an hour and minus 2,288 miles per hour. So we're accelerating and decelerating. So now let's have a look at the ISS. This is travelling and orbiting Earth at 17,000 miles per hour, doing various orbits around Earth. We're looking at one orbit. The orbit that goes closest to the crossing of the equator and the Sun's terminator line. Any other orbit will not show us the massive variations in acceleration and deceleration. Our rocket is now tracking the ISS as it orbits Earth. The Earth is travelling at 67,000 miles per hour, so to keep behind the ISS as it rotates around Earth, it has to increase and decrease by 17,000 miles per hour to keep up with the ISS. This is an acceleration and deceleration chart. At the bottom we have degrees of rotation. Now this can be the ISS, it can be the Moon, it can be a point on the equator. On the left hand side we have our speed plus and minus. The centre green line denotes the 67,000 mile an hour Earth travels around the Sun. So remember, that yellow dot which is a point on the equator, it's got to be travelling at a constant speed. A thousand mile an hour around the circumference of Earth, and 67,000 mile per hour around the Sun. If that changed in a short time, we'd notice it. So the big question is, how has this been missed? Well, we're given that the Earth moves at constant speeds, as it spins, and we don't feel anything. So that's then put in a box, and we're told that constant speed is now travelling at another constant speed around the Sun. So by putting the constant speed in a box, you just think constant speed, and then another constant speed. So it all makes sense. We need to take them out of the box and work them see how they work together. And when they work together, this is what we get. For us to feel no movement, all speeds must be constant in all directions.
miles in speed. So we can travel in at 7,000 miles an hour, 500 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. With our speed constants, like on this train, you feel no movement. But if that constant speed changes over a short amount of time, by like 3 miles an hour per second, no matter what constant speed we're doing, we'll feel it the same at every constant speed. So we'll treat this train as birth journey around the sun. So don't forget, I'm travelling at the same speed as the train. So if I move my hand towards the front of the train, my hand moves past the train. If I move my hand to the back of the train, my hand is moving slower than the train. Don't forget, if you're on a globe spinning, your spinning, and as this point rotates, it's moving towards the front of the train, and this point is moving towards the back of the train. And as it's constantly rotating and moving forward, you're accelerating and decelerating as it rotates. So that's Earth, so we're at a thousand mile an hour. So imagine we're doing 67,000 miles an hour and we're on the ISS. So we're doing 67,000 mile an hour that way. And we're rotating at 17,000 mile an hour around Earth. So these points represent the ISS spinning around Earth. As we get to here, we're travelling at 17,000 mile an hour faster than the Earth is travelling that way. As we get to here, we're travelling at 67,000 mile an hour faster that way. So we're going slower by 17,000 mile an hour than the Earth. Travelling at 67,000 miles an hour. The ISS is travelling at 17,000 miles an hour. And this rotation is going that way, and this rotation is going that way. So, like on the train, it's doing 67,000 miles an hour that way, and I am right ahead by 17,000 miles an hour. I'm doing 17,000 miles an hour faster than the train. I'm going to round down, round down that end of the train can slower by something like that. And you feel it. So get into your head that we're not looking at rotation, we're looking at one direction to travel that should be, if the flow is true, the constant speed. With rotation, that constant speed doesn't exist. It's only when we don't rotate and move that can be a constant speed. As soon as you're rotating on the edge of the ball, there's no constant speed in that direction. This is a constant speed. As soon as you have forward direction, there's no constant speed. One constant speed, the centre of this ball spins, is the only point in this globe that is moving at a constant speed along with this track. Right here, by the road, Southern Range, Brickhouse, Burfield, Unifree, Bachelet, Morley, and Lee. Any passengers for Halifax, Brunswick, Interchange? This is the top view of the Earth. This is the North Pole. So the North Pole, travelling along this train, is travelling at, say, at one constant speed. Put something on the equator. And as it rotates and moves in this direction, this is now moving slower than the train. As it comes around, it's starting to move faster than the train. So as it rotates, a thousand mile an hour around the surface, we're accelerating 
here we're accelerating faster than the centre point and the centre point is doing the constant speed. This is constantly changing speed along that constant speed. So if rotation's got to be constant and that direction of speed has got to be constant for us to feel no movement, it doesn't work. The only constant when we're rotating the movement is the rotation. Rotation with direction, we're accelerating in that direction and decelerating as we move supposedly through space on a spinning ball at a thousand miles an hour. Look at the ISS. And the ISS does several orbits, so we're told. So if I'm moving along the track at 67,000 mile an hour, and the orbit of the ISS is that way, then there's no acceleration and deacceleration along that constant. But it's the orbit this way that mostly shows how ridiculous the ISS is. If we're travelling along this track at 67,000 mile an hour around the sun, and the ISS is accelerating 17,000 mile an hour, then it's decelerating at 17,000 mile an hour. It's constantly accelerating then decelerating along that 67,000 mile an hour journey. So the ISS does one orbit in 90 minutes. So in 90 minutes, we accelerate and decelerate by 17,000 mile an hour. That's a massive acceleration and deceleration. So how can the so-called scientists on the ISS float as if still in space and be accelerating along that 167,000 mile an hour journey and decelerating at such radical amounts and still stay floating? As if nothing was happening. It doesn't work. Remember, they tell us we constantly rotate and the ISS constantly rotates at the same speed. That's why we don't feel anything. But rotation with direction, that direction speed needs to be constant as well. So for us to feel nothing, we need to have a constant that way or that way and this needs to be a constant that way. But as soon as we rotate, us on the edge of a globe or in an orbit, that changes for us. We accelerate and decelerate along that one journey. When you combine rotation with direction, one of them constant speeds changes. Rotation stays the same, but you on the outer ring of a rotating globe, your speed in that 67,000 mile an hour direction changes. And it changes quite dramatically when you work it out. Now this has been hidden from us, I think, quite simply. Because they tell us the globe spins at a thousand mile an hour. It's all constant and that's it, it's fine. Then they put that in a box and say, right, it's all constant speeds. Then they go, well, this box of constant speed is now travelling that's 67,000 mile an hour around the sun. So, yeah, that's constant, that's constant. Or so it seems. But when you take these both out of the box and put rotation with direction, you on these points, as you rotate, the speed changes in this direction, the direction of travel of Earth around the sun.
Right, so let's wrap up with the physics. Rigid body rotation with translation, which means a rotation that's moving at the same time. Look at the links below in the video description. So we have a point on the equator of Earth. Two points. This is the North Pole looking down on Earth as it rotates and moves around the Sun. So these two points, as we rotate and get to here, are moving at 67,000 mile an hour. Both of them. Well, the tangential velocity of rotation moving a thousand that way and then a thousand that way. So you do the vector addition for both, link below in the video. There's a 2,000 mile an hour difference in velocity over 12 hours. So, short video of the calculation. It's impossible for us not to feel that amount of acceleration. That's what the vector addition tells us. That's what we should be doing if we're spinning and moving through space. The ISS destroys the space illusion using rigid body rotation with translation physics. ISS orbiting Earth is doing 67,000 mile an hour. Same as Earth, these two points. Again, using the tangential velocity, 17,000, 17,000. Do the vector addition. If you know physics, you'll know what a vector addition is. So here, what speed am I doing? 50,000 miles an hour. There. What speed am I doing here? It causes the vector addition. The vector addition, sorry. 84,000 miles per hour. So once you do that over 45 minutes from there to there, so that's half an orbit, 45 minutes. Every second, the ISS would have to be moving like a Ferrari in this direction. The orbit stays the same. But the direction that it's going with the sun, around the sun, is dramatically changing. It would be impossible to be squashed tomatoes. That's the end of the globe. Work it out. Look at the animation. This is showing the vectors as the half of the rotation. The red dashed line shows the resultant vector of the two vectors as it rotates. And note it gets bigger as it rotates. This shows that we're getting faster as it rotates. That point on that rotation is moving faster as a result of those two vectors.